Om Gyan Timirandasya Gyanajana Salakaya Chaksu Unmilitam Yena Tasmai Sri Guravena Maha Sri Chaitanya Mano Bistam Stav Ditam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Gadam Mayam Dadati Swam Padantikam Pandeham Shiguro Shiyuta Padekamalam Shigurun Vaishnavam Scha Si rupam sa grijatam sahaganat raganatam vitam tam sajivam sa dvaitam sarvadutam parijana sahitam krishna chaitanya devam sri radha krishna padam sahaganat lalita sri vishakam vitam scha he krishna karuna sindhu dinabandhu jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostate Tapta Kanchana Gaudangi Radhe Vrindavaneshwari Vikabhanu Suti Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Pancha Kalpa Tarubhascha Kripa Sindhu Bhavacha Patitanam Bhavane Bhyo Vaishnave Bhyo Namaho Namaha Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadad Har Sivasari Gor Bhakta Vrind Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare I don't like the colors. <laughs> just, no, I just... Usually we get a garland in the morning, not in the evening. Okay. Anyway, I'll send my representative tomorrow morning. You can give it to him. He, he has four legs, though. He does not. He's not. A <laughs> <laughs> he looks a little different, but he's okay. <laughs> so, um, Sunday coming up is uh, is uh, actually a multi worshipful, honorable day of personalities and ceremonies. It is uh, the disappearance of Srinivas Acharya, the disappearance of Dhananjaya Pandit, the disappearance of uh, Gadadhar Das. This is different than Gadadhar Pandit, the Gadadhar Das. Gopastami, and then the calendar doesn't mention it, but it's also connected. Gostastami, Gostastami is. Gopastami, Gostastami is the day that Krishna became five years old and then began herding cows before he was only herding uh, calves. <laughs> so it was kind of a ceremony that's performed in Vraj where Krishna is eligible now to take care of the cows. So that's Gopastami, Gostasami actually. And when we were in New Vrindavan, um, we would perform this ceremony. We would go out to the cow barn and uh, with different colored dyes, we would um, make handprints in the dyes and then put the handprints on the cows. And then decorate the cows with uh, silver uh, colors for their horns and gold for their hoofs, like that. And give carlins to the cows and sometimes feed the cows with sabji <laughs> and puris and what else? And bananas, because they like bananas. <laughs> so that was sweet. It was a day for honoring the cows. But I'll speak about uh, Srinivas Acharya a little tonight, because he's such a prominent Acharya. As we say, as, as we sing every morning, what is it? Ha ha Prabhu Srini, ha pa, what is that last line? Ha ha. Nice and loud. 
Yeah, Doya Kora Sri Achaya Prabhu Srinivas Narotama da, Ramachandra Sangha Mage Narotama Das. So uh, Srinivas Acharya, and uh, it's understood that that song, that bhajan that we sing for the departure of a great soul, Ayanilo Premadana, was written by Narottam Das Thakur when Srinivas Acharya disappeared. And so, uh, feeling the separation of Srinivas, he wrote that bhajan. Um, because they were very, very intimate associates. And Srinivas's life is quite voluminous, and uh, he was a grihasta, even at an early age, throughout most of his life. But he was a person who was um, predicted by Lord Chaitanya, and not only predicted, but Lord Chaitanya planned his appearance in the world. Hmm. Um, when uh, Lord Chaitanya was taking sannyas at Katwa, uh, Srinivas's father, Gangadhara Bhattacharya, he wanted he heard about this effulgent sannyasi taking sannyas. So he traveled from Jajigram to Katwa, and uh, just to witness this ceremony by Keshava Bharti giving sannyas to. Lord Chaitanya. Of course, when we um, carefully, uh, what is it, analyze this particular pastime, it's the most heart-rendering pastime you could possibly believe. The whole pastime is just crying. Everybody was crying <laughs> in anguish, seeing the hair, especially the hair-cutting ceremony when Lord Chaitanya's hair was cut. The barber who was commissioned to do it, didn't want to do it. And uh, he was reluctant, but Lord Chaitanya actually said something to convince him to do it. I don't know what he said, but he did it, because he's powerful. <laughs> and uh, the barber did it, but during the whole time he was crying also. <laughs> so it was pretty much a crying festival <laughs> the whole time. <laughs> We don't cry so much. The only ones who cry is ladies now. The men refuse to enter into that mood. <laughs> we become real tough now. <laughs> but in Vaishnav circles, it's a lot of crying going on. <laughs> Krishna was crying when he was separated from the residents of Vrindavan. The Vrindavan residents were crying because Krishna was separated. <laughs> Even Krishna was crying. <laughs> There's so much crying going on. And Prabhupada ultimately gives us the, ha the, the, the highest principle of bhakti. He says, only when you cry for Krishna can you get Krishna. So us guys have to work a little bit. <laughs> but that's the, that's, the, that's, that's the statement of reality. And only when you actually can cry for Krishna, then you can get Krishna. Otherwise, forget, it's, anything below that is not qualified. <laughs> um, so, of course, the barber, after finishing Lord Chaitanya's hair, he quit barber job. He became a sweet maker after that. <laughs> Took up a whole new profession. Couldn't go back to cutting hair after that one. That was the pinnacle. So Gangadas Bhattacharya came to witness, and when he was witnessing, his mind really got absorbed in seeing Lord Chaitanya. This effulgent sannyasi, so beautiful. And uh, when he received his name, given by Keshava Bharti, Bharti, Krishna Chaitanya, Sri Krishna Chaitanya, that's all he could say. He kept saying it over and over again, Shri Krishna Chaitanya, Shri Krishna Chaitanya. He became like a madman. There was no coherence to his life. He was just over and over saying, Shri Krishna Chaitanya. So when he came home, he couldn't stop. <laughs> and so his relatives and friends and people in the area, they gave him a new name, called him Chaitanya Das. <laughs> um, being injected with the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, his life changed. 
Him and his wife had planned not to have a family. But then, one night, both of them went to sleep and they had the same dream. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared to them and said, uh, you should have a, a child. So they woke up and they noted and then they compared. Both of them had the exact same dream. So after that, a son was born. And uh, that was Srinivas Acharya. And Lord Chaitanya had predicted, even before he was a parent, he said, many of the Goswamis have written books, but Srinivas Acharya will distribute the books. <laughs> so he was noted. There's no record of him writing anything. The only thing he, that we know he wrote was the song by the six Goswamis that I least, maybe there's a few other songs, but he, the six Goswami Astikam, Vande Rupa Sanatana Ragu Yago, Sri Jiva Gopal Ago. And that was written by Srinivas Acharya, which was a beautiful bhajan. When you hear Srila Prabhupada sing that bhajan, you enter into the spiritual world. It's so sweet. <laughs> And so deep in Prabhupada's love for Krishna. So now the son was born. This was in the year 1517. Lord Chaitanya had taken sannyas in the year 1510. So right after that, this boy grew up quite fast and he had a great interest in reading and studying scriptures and associating with sadhus. So he uh, had heard about Lord Chaitanya, but he had never saw Lord Chaitanya, so he wanted to meet Lord Chaitanya. So he decided, that, along with a lot other group of devotees, to go try to meet Lord Chaitanya. But the word was out that soon Lord Chaitanya would uh, disappear. Somehow everyone could feel that soon the Lord would disappear, and everyone was afraid of that. How the Lord disappeared was really... There's three opinions of how he disappeared. One of them is completely rejected. The other one is considerable, but the one that we know is that when they were having kirtan in the Tota Gopinath temple, which was a deity given by Lord Chaitanya to Gadadhar Pandit, uh, during the kirtan, the kirtan reached such an ecstatic height that at one point Lord Chaitanya disappeared from the kirtan. And then, at, and then everyone, after some time, they started to realize he's gone. <laughs> and they looked around, and he was gone. And it's understood, if you go to the Tota Gopinath temple, there's a mark on the deity on his uh, left leg, I think, or right leg. I think it's the right leg. There's a cut. It says that this is where Lord Chaitanya entered into Gopinath, which was the deity of Gadadhar Pandit, to show his love for his devotee Gadadhar, who was ultimately a manifestation of Srimati Radharani. And you can see that mark, the Pujaris will show you. And the deity is a sitting down deity, although he was once standing up. <laughs> and that's another beautiful story, how the deity sat down. <laughs> Uh, Gadadhar Pandit was in was in misery after Lord Chaitanya left, and he would address Gopinath every day. So it says because of his ecstasy and separation from Lord Chaitanya, he was aging one year every day, and he was getting old fast. So it says because of that, his body was getting like an old man. So when he tried to dress the deity, one time he had, a, he had the crown, and he was trying to put it on the head of the deity, and the deity's tall. So he was trying to reach up, and he couldn't reach. And he was shaking, trying to put the crown on. But Gopinath, feeling compassion for his disciple, <laughs> or his servant, sat down. <laughs> The deity sat down right in front of him. And that deity is still in that position. <laughs> you can see him. He's a sitting down cross-legged deity. <laughs> it's a beautiful temple. Tota means garden. So right around the temple, there's a lot of gardens there. And we've been there a few times to have festivals with the devotees from Chaupati. And it's always a beautiful place to sit 
chant japa and, and uh, interact with other Vaishnavas. It's a big area. Um, so now he's on his way to meet Lord Chaitanya in Puri, but the traveling party received the word from a messenger, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has left the planet. So he was devastated, lost consciousness, and was feeling so unfortunate that he never got to see Lord Chaitanya. Finally, when he reached uh, Jagannath Puri, he came and he took shelter of, uh, of Gadadhar Pandit. And he wanted to learn Srimad Bhagavatam. This was his lifelong desire. So he asked Gadadhar if he could learn Bhagavatam under him, study under him. And, and Gadadhar said yes. So Gadadhar tried to teach him, but there was a problem because every day when Gadadhar was reading his Bhagavatam, he was crying in a separation from Lord Chaitanya. And the tears were blurring the ink. You know, it's not like the pages we have now or our, or our you know, or electronic devices. If you cry on your electronic devices, they may collapse also, but anyway. <laughs> so he, uh, yeah, the page, he couldn't read. So he gave the book to uh, to Srinivas. He said, you go back to Navadweep, and you have the scribes recopy my Bhagavatam, and then come back and I will teach you. So Srinivas was excited, took the Bhagavatam, left. Of course, that's a long journey. And after about a month, he returned, or maybe a little more than a month. But when he returned, Gadadhar Pandit left the planet. So he was feeling unfortunate. But they said, the devotees said to him, go to Vrindavan and take shelter of Rupa and Sanatana Goswami. So... He was on his way to Vrindavan, hoping to meet Rupa and Sanatana Goswami. He had heard about them, and he also had heard about the writings of Rupa Goswami and Sanatana Goswami. So he was eager to meet these two great personalities. So he arrived right late at night one night, and there was a big ceremony going on in Vrindavan. It was practically midnight, and he asked, what is this ceremony that's going on? He said, you haven't heard Rupa and Sanat have left the planet. <laughs> Again, this time he was hit with, like a, with another thunderbolt and he struck and he fainted and he collapsed, he lost consciousness. Uh, after some time he woke up and Jiva Goswami was there. And Jiva Goswami took him, took, gave him shelter and started to teach him Srimad Bhagavatam. At that time, Naratam Das Thakur and Shamananda Pandit were also there in Vrindavan. Jiva Goswami had a long, strong desire to make copies of all the Goswami books and then distribute it. It's interesting to note that in one book, I have a copy of the book, I forgot who wrote it, in the back pages of the book there are letters between Srinivasacharya, Jiva Goswami, um, and a few other persons, actual written hand letters describing and talking about book distribution. <laughs> and there's also a list of how many books that they sold and what, what copies they actually sold. They actually kept score. <laughs> so this is not something out of our tradition to keep score. <laughs> um, I think the book is by Nityananda Das, who wrote Prema Vivarta, which is another name for which is also another book by Jagadan, Jagannath, Jagannath Pandit. But this is a different frame of Vivarta. And in this, it, it describes the life of Srinivas, Janava Devi, Bir, Birbad Chandra, and uh, many of the pastimes that happened after the disappearance of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. It's a beautiful book if you can get a copy. It's called Prema Vivarta, Prema Vivarta by Nityananda Das. Nityananda Das was a disciple of, uh, of Janava Devi. <laughs> so, learning from Jiva Goswami, after Jiva Goswami, he reunited those three people together, Srinivasacharya, Naratam Das, and Sh Shamananda. He said, I have a mission for you. 
I want to, I want you to take all the original copies of the Goswami books, with Chaitanya Charitamrita by Krishna Das Kaviraj, um, Ujwala Nilamani by Rupa Goswami, and many of the writings of the Goswamis, and uh, bring them to Navadweep and have them many copies made of each. And that was a long journey. And it was also quite of a risky journey. There was a lot of dangerous places that they had to pass through. So Jiva Goswami arranged for a bullock cart with a huge box and putting all the books in the box. He locked and tied up the box very tight, strapped it onto the bullock cart and assigned 11 guards to travel with these three sadhus. And so they made their journey quite free from difficulties. But finally they came to one area just out of one kingdom called one king. His name was Birham Bir. Now Birham Bir was the king of the province there, but he was also the leader of the Dakoids. <laughs> Sounds like today's kings, anyway. <laughs> so, <laughs> Hare Krishna. He... Uh, He uh, used to consult one astrologer to find out if there's any travelers in coming through his kingdom, and then if they, he was, they were, and they were carrying carrying any wealth, he would send his dacoits out to to capture them and sometimes kill them and steal their wealth. So that's how he became rich as king. <laughs> so. He consulted his astrologer, and the astrologer said, actually, there is a group of travelers coming through, and they have a great treasure with them. The king got excited, so he called his dacoits. But then he gave a different instruction this time. He said, get that treasure, but don't harm anybody. <laughs> he never said that before. So the devotees had stopped, and they uh, were resting in this one area. And uh, it was getting late, so the dacoits were waiting for night to fall, and finally it came. But one thing happened which was unusual, which never happened. Everybody fell asleep. All 11 guards and the three sadhus. And so the dacoits just walked in, took the cart with the bullock, and just took it away. It was easy. No resistance no awareness from anybody. When they woke up, of course, it was a shock for everyone. Everyone felt devastated. Oh my God, the books are gone. And uh, so Srinivasacharya, Naratam, and Shamananda were thinking, what is the use of our life now? We better go to the Ganga and give up our life. So they were actually planning that, but then a voice came out of the sky and says, the king has stolen the books, be patient. <laughs> so that voice was heard only by Srinivas. So he turned to Naratam and Shamananda and said, I'm going to stay here and try to find the books. You, Naratam, you go to Ketri Gram and preach there. And you, Shamananda, you go to Orissa and you preach there. So the two sadhus left, the guards were dismissed, and Srinivas was on his own. So he made his way towards the uh, palace of King Birhambir in Vanavishnupur, that was the name of the province. And uh, one, the king used to have regular discourses on Srimad Bhagavatam. Although he was a, a dacoy, he liked Bhagavatam. <laughs> Honeybow. <laughs> I guess maybe that's our history too. <laughs> so he had his ministers come together, pundits, court pundits, and uh, discuss Bhagavatam. So Srinivas came just to listen, and they were talking about Bhagavatam. So as they were talking about Bhagavatam, Srinivas started making faces and showing some restlessness listening to them. So the court pundits, 
they start noticing, especially the lead pundit, he said, oh, you don't like our in interpretation? Let us hear yours. So he spoke, and the king was there. And when he spoke, he spoke in such a way that he, he, he really unraveled the truth of Srimad Bhagavatam. It was so clear and so bright and so astounding to everyone's mind that everyone felt really happy and everyone could understand he knows Bhagavatam. So the king became so happy that he went and said to Srinivas, please stay here, become part of my uh, ministry and you will be the court pundit, the head. <laughs> so he gave him the position. So Srinivas stayed there, and after some time, the king said, Is there anything I can do for you? Anything? He said, Yes, actually, uh, I had some books, and they're lost now. He said, I was traveling, and our books got stolen. The king said, Oh, I have the books. <laughs> so he led him over to the box, and there were the books. But it was interesting, because when the books were packed, they put the Chaitanya Charitamrita on the bottom. But when they opened the box, the Chaitanya Charitamrita was on the top. <laughs> if you have a pot of milk and you let it sit, what happens? What happens to the milk? Cream will come to the top, yeah. So the cream of all Vedic literature, Chaitanya Charitamrita. <laughs> rose to the top. So this was a nice indication of the superiority of that text. And then Srinivas stayed, and then the king surrendered to Srinivas and became his disciple. He got initiated. And the king became such a Vaishnava, and he has a lot of influence, that king. Of course, he was a, he was a former leader of the Dakites, so using his kingly position, he forced everybody in his, in his uh, providence to become Vaishnavas. <laughs> I think we need a few kings like that today. <laughs> if you don't become Vaishnavas, you're not going to be here for long. <laughs> so so it, it's explained that that whole province, it's called Vana, Vana Vishnupur. Even today, many people are Vaishnavas in that area. And so the king developed such an attraction for Srinivas. When Srinivas would go out and preach and then come back, during the time he was gone, the king would just be overwhelmed with separation. And he developed such love for Srinivas. In fact, he was always even sending letters to Srinivas, when will you return? Srinivas would write back, I'm, I have this business, I hope to return very soon. So the king actually became, one of, became a really dedicated disciple. So this story we know is one of the outstanding stories in the life of Srinivas. Of course, later on, he, he connected with Narantam again, and he was part of that festival in Ketarigram, which we spoke about on how Narantam led the Kirtan and Lord Chaitanya appeared. During that time, six sets of deities were installed for the festival, and Srinivas Acharya installed all six deities, six sets, and also did the first worship during the festival. Um, Srinivas Acharya had a dear disciple named Ramachandra Kaviraj, and Ramachandra Kaviraj and, and uh, Naratam developed such deep, deep friendship. We hear it also in that song, uh, Ramachandra Sangha Maghe Naratamadas. He expresses his separation from... Uh, Ramachandra. It says the two of them were like um, two souls in one, in one, two souls with one body. They were together. One soul in two bodies. I'm sorry, that's, that makes sense. One soul in two bodies. They were so close. And Srinivas Sacharya could observe that and therefore he gave Ramachandra his disciple to Srinivas. Uh, so that's interesting. Sometimes we see a disciple of a particular spiritual master will be given by that spiritual master to another 
spiritual master to associate with or to learn under that other spiritual master or to assist that spiritual master in some important service like that. So that's the, that's the, a real spiritual master doesn't get attached to his disciples. He gets attached to the, them being uh, Krishna conscious. That's his only attachment. It's not he likes he tries to control them or possess them or to uh, make sure that uh, nobody else uses them for their service. That's not a spiritual master. In fact, when... When disciples of a spiritual master go to another spiritual master and learn and grow, it's the happiness of that spiritual master also, like that. So we like that when devotees don't get into this family clique. Well, this is my guru and that's your guru. You got your guru, man. I got my guru, and my guru is better than your guru. <laughs> He can sing better, <laughs> and he he has better tea lock. <laughs> so we we get into this guruism sometimes in this kind, right? So, but that wasn't there. And that's not there in Vaishnav, real Vaishnav circles. Jai Sri Panchatattva Ki Jai. So Narada Srinivasacharya, he was married when he was quite young. But then again, there was a devotee named, hmm, I think his name was Gopal Bhattacharya, yeah. And he had a beautiful, young, qualified daughter. And uh, Birabhadra Chandra said to Srinivas, you should marry her also. <laughs> And so he did, and he took a second wife like that. So he had two wives. And although he was a Grihasta householder, he, he was just an amazing Grihe Dako, Bone Dako, Sabdahari Boli Dako. It doesn't matter what ashram you're in, it's matter whether you're Krishna conscious or not. <laughs> the color of your cloth doesn't indicate your Krishna consciousness. Uh, what indicates is how much you're attached to serving Krishna and chanting the holy names of the Lord. And that is your qualification, not so much, not your ashram like that. Like that. So, Srinivasacharya, he was just an amazing personality. There's a lot to his life, a lot of details. Um, if you want to know more, which I recommend, try to read that book by Nityananda Das describing a lot about the life of Srinivas in that book. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so this is what I know about Srinivas, that him and Aratam Das were very, very deeply related in uh, uh, Vaishnava friendship. They were very close. In fact, it was on the disappearance day of Srinivas, the disappearance of Srinivas, that Naratam started to go into seclusion and left his public preaching and started to go into more like a Nirjan Bhajan. And finally, a little bit after that, he departed. It's like that sometimes you see when Lord Chaitanya departed, um, Many devotees left after that because they couldn't live without the association of Lord Chaitanya. So they wanted to leave so they could rejoin Lord Chaitanya wherever he was. So that happens sometimes when the Vaishnavas depart, other Vaishnavas who are close to them find it difficult to continue on. And this is a phenomena of Vaishnav culture. It's always been there and it'll be there in our society also as spoken by one very elevated devotee in our he says i have i have nothing i have no anxiety in krishna consciousness i have no fear my only anxiety is that when i start to see my god brothers disappearing it is just too much and this year has been a year with many devotees left already so many 
at least four or five Prabhupada disciples have left this year. And that's a lot for one year. So, yeah. It really makes it... When you think, oh, who else will go? How will I, you know... When someone really close to you... Of course, Vaishnavas are always close. But when someone really close to go, and then you just think, what is the use? Let me go soon. Tamal Krishna Goswami says, I want to go first because I want to be there to greet all the devotees as they come. <laughs> he said that. So he departed in 2002. <laughs> so it's been 20, 18 years later. Like that. But the sad part is that when the, a spiritual master leaves, the disciples get lost. The serious disciples become more serious. The weak disciples fall away and lose their enthusiasm in Krishna consciousness. And those in the middle go either one way or the other. They either go or they go. Mm -hmm. That happens like that when spiritual master leaves. So we have to become strong because it's not like that we should lose our enthusiasm in our Krishna consciousness or fall into a, uh, or say, a slump where we can't uh, function because of the loss of our spiritual, or lo the, the physical loss. I remember when Bhakti Tirtha Swami departed, I was there, and uh, boy, it was devastating for all his disciples. So I was commissioned along with Dhanadar Swami, and we were giving classes throughout the whole day to the disciples, trying to encourage them. Some devotees, I mean, some devotees just told us, I can't go on. And there's no reason why I can't go on. I'm not going to go on anymore. They told us straight, right in the middle of classes. It was just too much for devotees, many of them. But we did whatever we could to try to help them understand that that uh, the spiritual master is not the physical body and our connection with the spiritual master is eternal. So now it's apricot, it's in the mood of separation. But that relationship is not lost by the disappearance of the spiritual master. Or even when the disciple leaves, the spiritual master still stays connected in some form or another. And it's an eternal relationship. Once it's established, it's eternal. And Prabhupada said, we will have our ISKCON in the spiritual world. <laughs> and uh, someone said to Prabhupada, Prabhupada, how will I recognize you in the spiritual world once I get back? Prabhupada said, you will know. <laughs> you will know immediately who I am. <laughs> Yeah. So the the transition from the material world to the spiritual world is sometimes very heart rendering and heartbreaking, but ultimately it ends in eternal life. If the disciple mm -hmm. simply stays sincere and serious in their Krishna conscious, and the spiritual master remains fixed in helping the disciple then that relationship is never lost. <laughs> Eternally it goes on. <laughs> it's not eternal. It starts, and then when it starts, it becomes eternal. <laughs> and Prabhupada says, and of course Prabhupada doesn't like to say this, but he says it. And he says, if you don't make it in this life, then the spiritual master has to return to come and get you in, your next li <laughs> in the next life. So Prabhupada said, please try to go back in this life and don't give me any trouble. <laughs> I don't want to come back here and have to try to save you. <laughs> but that, if the disciple falls away and breaks the contract, then the, the, disciple, the spiritual master is no longer responsible. But if the disciple remains sincere but doesn't make it to pure devotional service, then the spiritual master will come back the next life in another form to uh, save that disciple. That's the eternal relationship between guru and disciple. 
It's not something that is just like some formality. Hmm. Okay. Would anyone like to add anything? Any comments? Danilu, what do you you look like you're ready to say something? <laughs> when are you gonna get initiated? Are you aspiring from someone? Yes. Good, 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 good. Yeah, aspiring is the first stage. Yeah. Usually after six months to a year in our practice, we should be in the position of aspiring for a spiritual master. Because that's the process. <laughs> okay, so thank you. Srimad Srivasacharya Ki Jai Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai